Hey everybody! Today, Rado runs through Artifacts Inc., which is a game where players run their own little archaeology companies, I guess? Uh, kind of like you don't have just one Indiana Jones on the payroll, you've got three or four or five of them, and you're sending them all around the world to go on canyon expeditions and desert expeditions. This is what you start out with, but over the course of the game, you can make your company bigger and have explorer societies and go on mountain expeditions and, and get a curator or a digging team or a cargo ship, all kinds of stuff. And we do all this by rolling lots and lots of dice. And I'm going to show you how it works today in this two-player game. Here I am, player one. I start with two bucks. I've got all the green cubes, and I am the first player. Jen, as the second player, gets three bucks, and we're ready to go. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of A, B, and C cards out here just waiting to be nabbed, as well as some D and E cards. And there's also some museums, because whatever we find, it belongs in a museum. I think everybody agrees with that. Although there's also private collectors that we can sell all our stuff to. And we can just go do some guide work if we need to, as well as go finding hidden treasures underwater by diving. Lots of stuff we can do. Let's get going. Now, at the beginning of the game, um, because the, everybody starts with the exact same cards, and you have to put them in a layout that is appropriate because once you've placed these, you cannot move them. And adjacency to cards can sometimes matter. Now, the things I can do is I can spend any die that has at least a 2, so anything but a 1, to buy new cards or to upgrade existing cards. I start the game with three adventurers on my retainer and as part of my company that represents three dice. I can go on can canyon expeditions, which means I need to roll a one or a three, four, five, or six. That's what the little plus means. I, I can, if I roll a one, I can put it here. If I roll a three or better. So anything but a two will let me go on canyon expeditions. And for desert expeditions, a four, five, or six will let me go. So what do I do? Well, I take my three adventurers that I've got on staff, and I roll and see what they come up with. All right, so I've got a three, four, and a five. Great. This is definitely a game where the higher you roll, the better. Rolling, roll, ro rolling low, with a few exceptions, like, say, this spot right here, this little one, generally um, isn't going to do you much good. So what do I want to do? I am now going to place these dice in any combination of my own cards or these public cards. And I think for starters... Let's see here. Well, you know what? I started with two bucks, and that is enough to upgrade my adventures. You can see up here in the top right corner of the card, there's it's two bucks to upgrade this. I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this three and put it in this spot. Remember, it could be a two, three, four, five, or six. So it's a two plus, that means it's a three. That means I can either spend my two bucks to buy any of these cards to add to my little outfit here, or I can upgrade a card I've already got. I'm going to upgrade this adventure card, and um, which cost me two bucks, which means on the next round, I'm going to have four adventurers instead of three. And unfortunately, I'm now broke. So let's see, what can I do about that to try and make some money back? Well, let's see here. I, I could say, come over here. I've got a four plus. That means I can get myself a scroll, I went out to a desert expedition, found a scroll, and then with this five, see that's full, that's full, I could come here and you know play paleontologist for a little bit and find some dinosaur bones or something like that. Or I could come up here to the private collector and sell this scroll I just got to make some money. Heck, I could even come to a museum. I have one scroll. So this museum likes scrolls, and if I come up here, then I can sell one, two, three, four, five, or six scrolls. And um, you know what? What the heck? I'm gonna, the scroll I found, uh, I'm going to go on ahead and sell that to the museum. Since I'm selling only one, I will move this up here. And now this space is full. This wing of the museum where they wanted to show a single scroll is full. Nobody can take that spot anymore. Now, every time you sell an item, whether it's scrolls, or artifacts, or gems, or bones to a museum, you get a dollar for every cube you sold. So I get a dollar, 
plus, no matter how many I sold, I get one bonus dollar here. So I just made two bucks back. So I spent two bucks to upgrade my adventure, but then I went out and did a desert expedition and then sold that back. So I'm pretty much where I started, but next round I've got four dice. And that was it. That was my whole turn. Now it is Jen's turn. And she's starting out with three as well. Let's see what she gets up to. All right, a one, a four, and a six. Now remember, at this point, that one, well, uh, it can be used to go over here. To, it can only be used for this canyon expedition, or to sell to private collectors, or to do guide work and just make a dollar. So that one's a little bit less useful for Jen. And what does she want to do? I see here. I think she will. Oopsie. I thought this was wrong. Yeah, uh, I had this on the on. Uh, this was a level two headquarters. It should have started as a level one headquarters. That was a mistake. So I think Jen is going to. Well, I guess she'll take this one and just go out and dig up some dinosaur bones. There we go. And now there's a, this is one place where she can send two dice. She'll send another die out here to get some more dinosaur bones. Now, she's got two, she could take this six and come over to the museum that wants dinosaur bones. And remember, she has to be a two, three, four, five, or six to come to this space. She could sell two, and that would make her two, um, basically two more, and she will have claims to space in this museum. So she'll only make two. But instead, I think she's gonna come here and buy as well. And instead of upgrading her adventurers or one of these other things, Jen's actually gonna buy a card. She's got three bucks to start with, I think, She's going to take all three of her starting bucks and hire a curator, a level one curator. And now, Jen can put this anywhere that's legal or relative to the rest of her company cards. So, uh, now, her cards can go ultimately into two rows. This is the top row, so she can put it to the right or the left, put it in here, or instead, she could put it down in the second row, any place adjacent to something she's already got. And positioning can, for some cards, be hugely important. Now, this one is going to be, whenever Jen tries to sell stuff, she always makes an extra buck. And that can be a big deal over the course of the game if you do lots of sales. But if Jen gets three bucks and upgrades this curator, he'll still have his make more money whenever you sell to a museum. But in addition to that, adjacent adventurers are worth one victory point at the end of the game. So... That is a little bit of something. So that means Jen, wherever she puts this, she's going to want to have adventurers next to it. I think she'll put this guy over here on the far right side of her, uh, of her adventure company. And um, so, now, oh, I, by the way, I forgot. When I, on my turn, upgraded my adventurers from level one to level two, originally they were worth zero victory points. As soon as I did this upgrade, they were worth one victory point. So this is a race to be the first to hit 20 points. So I had scored one point. Coming over here, Jen, she has also scored one point. All right. And now whenever she sells stuff, she'll be making more money for the rest of the game. Plus, she wants to get this upgraded so it's worth additional points for being an extra adventurer. And she'll want to hire some additional adventurers as well to put them around this curator so there's even more points to be had. Okay, so that was Jen's turn. Back to my turn. And now I'm rolling four bones. Here we go. Woo, okay. Well, I got a one and a three and a four and a five. All right, well... That one, I'm not going to be doing anything too terribly fancy with it. I'll just go on ahead and do a canyon expedition. Let's see here. Uh, although, let's see, what's the upgrade for canyon expedition? I think it's, a, yeah, you get one, two, and three, so you can pick up three bones at once. You know what I think I'm going to do? You know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to go on ahead. I, I made, since I made some more money, I am going to come back over to my headquarters and buy something else. And, oh, by the way, once Jen bought this curator, the flying boat moved over, revealing a truck, which lets you re-roll dice. Oh, at any time during your turn, one die per turn. There's a good way to get rid of those ones. I see. What I was thinking about, I was going to go on ahead and upgrade my head, my canyon to be three and then i was just gonna have my other three dice get me three dinosaur bones because then i have my one my four and my five and so i'd have a lot of dinosaur bones that i could sell over to this museum i could sell them three at a time and that would have been cool but i loves me a truck who doesn't want a truck yeah i think that i think all right so i'm gonna buy and i'm gonna pay one buck to get this truck all righty 
And this is going to be worth one point, so I've scored my second point. And now, what's this power on the back? Reroll two dice. So this doesn't have any particular meaning or value for where it goes, other than there are other cards out there, like say this flying boat, that wants to be adjacent to um, B cards. Now this is an A card, but I think if I recall correctly, yeah, no, it's B and Cs. Is there one that wants to be adjacent to A's? Yeah, there is. There's this tour agency, which might show up eventually in the game, where I might want to ensure that my A cards are in a position like here and here, and then I'd put like the tour agency there, and then I'd put another A so I could get a whole bunch of adjacency that way. But that's if that tour agency makes it out. Let's see here. Um, I will go on ahead, though, and I'll just put the truck right, right there. All right. So I scored a point for that, and it cost me a buck. And now I cannot buy or that anymore because I've already filled up one space. And I've still got, so I'll go on ahead and get one dinosaur bone. And although, wait a minute, no, I don't have to be stuck doing one dinosaur bone. I'll use my truck now and re-roll this one. And a four gives me a lot. Now a four, the only thing it can't do is come to this expedition. But now I've got access to more stuff. Let's see here. So, and I've still got one buck, but I can't buy anything anymore. Um, actually, it's funny. As much as I, you know, thinking about it, I probably shouldn't re-roll this one just so that I can put this here along with this so that I can get two dinosaur bones. So even though I have the truck for re-rolling, at this point, I think it makes sense not to re-roll and just keep that one. So I've got three dinosaur bones. And now with this five, I can come over here to the museum and sell all three dinosaur bones and fill up that space and make three bucks. So next turn I got four bucks, then I can start making some big buys. Okay, and so now it's Jen's turn again. She's gonna roll her three dice because she still only has three adventurers. And, oops, I guess it was a six. And there's an interesting thing going on. I already now have exhibits in two museums. At the end of the game, oh, oh, and I should say, because I have the most exhibits in this museum, uh, if the game, no wait, no wait, does the game, no, we don't score the exhibits until the end of the game, do we? I believe that's the case. Let me double check that. Because basically whoever has a majority in any museum, there are points to be had. Three points, three points, four points, and four points. And I believe you don't score those until somebody has crossed the 20 point threshold. Let's see. Um, there it is. Then the turn Gain, yeah, you don't get your museum majorities until the end of the game. So, right now, I'm in the running to get six points at the end of the game if I can hold on to the majority of these two museums. So, that's uh, interesting as well. So, anyway, so Jen's got her dice. Where is she going to go? Let's see. Well, first of all, she makes extra money whenever she sells. So, I think Jen, first of all, and she would like to upgrade this guy so she can get more adventurers and put them next to him. So Jen's got two dinosaurs, or two, two dinosaurs. Although for, in the, for the dinosaurs, well, she can sell one, two. She cannot sell three because I've already blocked that space. But she could go on ahead and, well, she doesn't have a one, so she can only pick up one dinosaur. If she could pick up two dinosaurs, then she could take the four space. And then she'd effectively be in the lead. If at the end of the game we're tied on how many cubes, whoever did the biggest exhibit wins that, that area majority. By the way, I forgot. I scored another point. In, in, in case you forget to score points as you go, you can always just take a quick look and see how many points you've got. I've got two points. Oh, no, I did. I did do it. Right. So what is Jen going to do with her stuff? Well, she needs some more money before she can buy anything else. So I think she will go on ahead and for starters, oops, and that die is out of the way. So use this two she got to sell the two dinosaur bones she got to the dinosaur museum, which gives her one, two, and no bonus. So one, two, but because of her creator, she gets three. So she just made three bucks off of that first action, and then she's got two more. So she could buy something else. For instance, she could now afford to upgrade her curator, or not for her second thing, she will do a buy, use this four, and spend the three bucks to get an adventurer, which is now, which she will put here, let's say. And so now in the future rounds, she's getting four dice as well, and she just made a point, so we're tied up on points, and then she's got a six. So, da, 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 da. I think, well, she wants to be able to sell as quick as possible. She'll go on ahead over here and get herself a scroll. All right. So there we go. And that was her turn. 
So we're all tied up. And now it's my turn. I'm rolling four dice once more. Woo! Okay. Oh my gosh, look at all these ones. Wow. Okay. Well, three ones, that's kind of a death sentence. I mean, well, that's not entirely true. I can do guide work with a one. I can do private collections with a one. And I can go to uh, Dinosaur Canyon with a one. But, you know what? I think I'm going to use this truck right now and re-roll one of these. And okay, there we go. So a six. So my truck paid off. Now, in the meantime, I've got these ones, so I might as well come here and get me some bones. And then my other one, let's see here. I could just come. Well, no, I actually, a one won't even let me. Well, a one will let me sell scrolls, but I don't have any scrolls. Plus, I'd need to have at least two scrolls to fill the number two spot. So I think this other one is just going to come over here and do some guide work. So now I've got five bucks, and I've still got my four and my six. Let's see. I could have upgraded my truck, which would give me another point, and would let me roll two dice a turn. But I'm happy with the truck for now. I think I've got five bucks. I should go on ahead and make a big purchase, I think. Let us go on ahead, and I will take my four to my headquarters, and I'm going to buy a mountain expedition. No, I'm not, because to buy this, I need four bucks and a scroll. So, first of all, I'm going to send my six over here to get myself a scroll. Then, I'm going to send my four over here to buy the... Oh, which one? Yeah, I'll, I'll buy the Mountain Expedition. And this cost me four bucks. And the scroll I just found. And so now I've got this and I need to place this somewhere. This is going to be worth another point. And um, basically, at the beginning, a fives... Or I can find a single gem every turn. If I upgrade it, I could, with a four and a six, and this isn't a, well, of course, a six is the top of the line. So where am I going to put this? This is a B card. If I'm still thinking about putting stuff next to my A card, maybe I'll put this over here, let's say. Because maybe I'll get the, like, you know, if I get an archive, I get one point for every adjacent B. So I probably want to put this someplace that I could put my archive next to, and then I could put some Bs around there. So that makes sense. So. I have just now expanded my operation to explore the mountains in addition to the desert and the canyon. And that was my turn, and now it's Jen's turn again. And she's got one, two, three, four dice. And I just rolled five for some reason. Let's just uh, go with these ones. And here is Jen's roll. What is she going to do? Oh, by the way, everything slid out. There's two digger teams available and a diving suit. And you know what? I forgot to mention, the diving is an important element too. That's another potential use for ones because you can see going for a dive, which by the way, will score you one victory point, no matter how deep it goes, you always score one victory point on these dives. The first dive you ever do is really easy. You can put any number of dice here such that they add up to two. So two ones would get you this. And so, you know, and, you know, to get this one, you need um, to put dice here that total 12, as an example. And uh, having a diving suit, which gives you plus two whenever you go diving, could help with that. So I should have mentioned that you know, the ones aren't quite a descent. They're also good for going diving if you want to. Anyway, Jen is totally broke. She's got one, two points. So she's behind, and she's got her four dice. And she's definitely going to want to sell stuff because she wants to keep leveraging that at, uh, curator. But a single scroll has already been taken. So Jen needs to go get herself some more scrolls. Well, first of all, she got a one. So, well, actually, let's come back to a second. So she needs at least a four to go get a scroll. She'll use this five to get a second scroll. Then she will sell to this museum, which is a museum that you can use a one at. So she's selling two scrolls. So Jen is taking command of that, and she gets two bucks for, the, for selling two scrolls, plus one bonus buck, plus one more bonus buck. So Jen just went from broke to rich. And she's still got two dice she could use to buy something else now. She's got four bucks. Or, what the heck, she could uh, buy to upgrade her headquarters so in the future she could buy two things at a time if she wants to. Everything's upgradable as well. Um, or, you know what? Yeah, Jen is going to buy. She'll use this three there uh, to buy. She's going to buy the other adventurer. And slap it down next to her. That cost her three bucks. And, right. So that means next round she's rolling five, and I'm sorry, I've lost track. She's got one, two, three, three, bu three points right now. One, two, three. But as soon as she flips this guy, she'll suddenly get three more points just like that. So that'll be a really big swing for her. 
but she needs three bucks to be able to do it. She's down to one buck. What's she going to do with her six? I guess she will go find some more bones. All right. And so that was her turn. And now she's rolling five. And now it's my turn. I'm still rolling four. And the game continues. That's it, folks. That is Artifacts, Inc. You just keep rolling dice. You get more and more over the course of the game. You get more and more money. You get more and more things that give you special abilities. Digger teams let you change the value of your dice. Diving um, can be always a, a good fallback if you just keep diving turn after turn after turn, as long as you can keep diving deeper because at early game, anybody can get these single points. But later on, and you, know, and you don't spend money to get these points. You just have to use your dice to get them instead of using your dice to get money to then buy stuff. But over the course of the game, they get tougher and tougher to do unless you've invested in your diving operations. I am now the first one to start finding these gems, which means I'm the only person who can get in this museum, which means as long as it stays like that and Jen never gets out access to gems. I got this four points in my back pocket at the end of the game, the same way she's about to get a lot of points for a curator. But that's it in a nutshell. Artifacts Inc. just keeps on going. It escalates. It's an incredibly quick game. And if you'd like to hear some final thoughts now, you can hit the I up in the top right corner screen or um, you know, follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.